Este es el podcast de Joven Verdadera. I think what I really want to warn any young person, if I could warn myself back then, is to not, first of all, to not believe the lies. Um, to I wish I had talked to my mom at a very early age. I, I didn't know how to express my mom to my mom how she was hurting me. She had no clue how hurt I was. And so I began to, and I've kind of recognized this about myself. I sometimes I don't ask real good questions. I, I sort of interpret what I hear rather than asking for for more information. And so I didn't ask my mom questions. Um, I would just, jumped to conclusions um, based on the way she treated me. And I, I had no clue the pain that she was in. I had no clue um, all the brokenness of her own life and the, the lies she'd believed about herself. And so um, looking back on it, if I could help that little girl to, to ask questions and to, to try to work on that relationship rather than shutting down and stuffing all my emotions. Because then for years, it put me on a trajectory. Like if, if we believe a lie, it may be a little lie at first and it's just a degree or two off, but by the time years out, you're way off from the target. And I think we don't realize how far those lies can take us. Um, so we really need to believe God's word is true um, and I think one of the most important ways that we can learn that God's word is true is ways he's already been faithful to us in the past. God doesn't reveal everything to us at once, and we have to take those um, steps of faith. But there's ways that God has already shown himself to you. And really, there, there's a verse, one of, um, if you look on like the top Bible verses, almost all of them will list Proverbs 3, 5 through 6, which says, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will direct your path. But I think most of us don't live like that. Most of us lean on our own understanding. Most of us um, interpret the word through what we feel rather than believing that God's way really is good, that he really does understand the way he created us, the way he, desire, uh, the way he designed us and wired us. So I think that's the most important thing um, is to really um, learn to trust God and also to tell people how you've been hurt. I, I was sexually abused as a child, and I never told anybody. And for years, that ate away at me. It made me feel like I was different. It made me feel like I was damaged, like I was used goods. And all of that was a lie from the enemy. And so I think those are some things I wish I could tell the younger me. I think one of the most important things uh, for a anyone who is has a friend who's struggling with gender confusion um, is to first of all understand that, that God really did not create you that way. But those feelings are real and they've come from somewhere. I work for a ministry um, in Oklahoma called First Stone Ministries and we, we help people understand how the lies they believed throughout their life have led them to wrong conclusions. Um, just because you have those feelings doesn't mean your conclusion about that is correct. Um, so, for example, in my life, I, I saw that my mom treated my brother different, and I began to interpret that as mom loved boys more than girls. Um, but the reality was my mom had miscarried two boys between my brother and I. She was deeply grieving these two boys. They were also a lot closer in personality. There were various reasons, um, but that's just one example. Um, boys who uh, struggle with gender or sexuality issues in many, many cases have a difficult relationship with their father or maybe a non-existent relationship with the father. Um, often it's a, it's a rejection of the same-sex parent out of hurt. Um, and it's not always about the parent. And a lot of times it's not the parent's fault. Like I said, we're all sinners raising other sinners. Your parents are not perfect. They were never going to be perfect. They never could be. Um, only God was the perfect parent. You know, and even his kids rebelled, and we're all God's kids. We all rebel in some way. Um, but the reality is that, you know, our parents have their own, um, their own mistakes, their own brokenness. Um, but for those that are struggling, there are probably things that have happened in your life. Maybe you, often we look at other people, um, like if, 
if we're more, um, you know, we, we feel like we're not the girly girl. We're not the, the cheerleader or the popular girl or whatever. We look at this group of girls and we think, well, I'll never be like them. And so you begin to um, identify more with the opposite. Um, it's an attempt to say, instead of trying to be that and failing, I'm just not going to try at all. And so I, there may be, there's lots of other things, but basically ask your friend a lot of questions. Pray first of all. Prayer is the most important thing because this really is a work of the Holy Spirit. There's nothing you can do to change that person's life, but God can. And you can be someone that God can use to do that. So ask a lot of questions, um, pray, and ask God to lead you because this is an individual journey for every person. There, there, I can't give you a script that, that would say this will lead that person out of that deception. But, but God knows what they need to hear. So ask the Lord, what do I need to say to my friend? And I, I think above all, that's the most important thing. Yeah, I, I can promise you, if you are struggling with gender confusion, God's way really is so much better. I, I didn't understand then. I was so wounded, and I was trying to become what I couldn't find um, for someone to be for me. But I didn't realize at the time there are over 6,500 biological differences between men and women. Every part of our body is designed for the way that God created us, for these roles that he gave us that isn't just about um, a, a stereotypical role um, to do this or that, but really is a the deeper way that we are designed as women. Um, it's to be a picture of Christ and the bride. It is a beautiful thing that God designed for us to be loved, to be cherished, to pr be protected, um, and so many other ways that are so good as a woman. But often when we, when we reject femininity, it's often because we've been hurt. But if, if we will allow the Lord to heal us and bring that redemption and that restoration, you will find so much satisfaction in the way that he has delivered you. I, for, I thought I could never love being a woman, but now I absolutely love being a woman. I, in fact, I've even learned that God's, God's ways in the Bible are actually good. I never thought that um, being submissive to a husband was a good thing when I used to read these passages when I was um, younger, but I, I decided to take God at his word. And so when Perry and I were dating, uh, we were in the car one day and, you know, I was just kind of looking out the windshield. So I wasn't looking at him directly the whole time. And I started talking about my ideas on this. And I said, you know, I really um, believe in biblical womanhood and I'm willing to submit to you as a wife. And I looked over and he had tears in his eyes and Perry's not a real emotional guy. He doesn't cry easily. You know, what? Like, what did I say? And he said, you're willing to do that? And I said, well, yes, I believe that's what the Bible says. And I said, no, you realize that that means there's a greater responsibility for you. I'm trusting you to lead me. And he sat up straighter and he puffed out his chest. He was like, yes, I'm, I want to do that. I'm willing to do that. And it was, there's something came alive in me as I saw me being able to encourage this man that he can be who God created him to be, to give him the confidence to lead and to pre protect the way that God created him. And it, it all of a sudden became this beautiful, um, complementary relationship as we were in God's design at that moment in the way that to relate to each other the way that God created.